Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at the difference between a single unit and a unit that is made up of smaller parts of a unit. Now the reason that this question comes up, and uh, this is uh, something that a couple folks were talking about over on Discord, is that sometimes when you're attacking certain ground units, the effect of the weapon is not what you expected it to be. And uh, we're going to go ahead and demonstrate that as well as kind of show you the differences in just a moment here. So let me go ahead and pause our simulation real quick. I'm going to go switch over to Red Force real fast. We're going to go zoom in on our little arrangement here. What you'll notice here is I have two units uh, plus a big old airfield right here. I've got myself an SA-2DE. This is the uh, kind of the PVO version of it. It's my favorite. And of course, we also have a flat face, a P-19. Now, when I go ahead and bring up the database entry for the flat face, you're going to notice a couple different things. So, first of all, if I scroll down here, it's got a nice little description, it's got a size, and if you observe carefully, you'll observe that this particular one has one damage point. Uh, this entire truck can get hit by one thing, and then the truck is pretty much OOS. Now, when I come over here to my good friend, the SA-2DE, which is a large battery, it's got all sorts of missiles and everything, if I were to run up to the database entry, you'll observe that it has zero damage points. Now, the reason it has zero damage points, of course, Course, is because it is a distributed target. It is not a single target. You're not hitting the whole battery for one damage or zero damage in this case. You have to hit each individual piece of it. Now, unfortunately for us, we don't get a nice little digital display that like shows us like the arrangement of the battery or anything, but that's okay. We can figure out what's inside the battery itself by running up to our little weapons page here. And what you'll actually notice is we're actually made up of a bunch of different units. So we have six single rail uh, guidelines here. Uh, we also can come down here. You can see we have a couple guys with uh, basically shoulder launch man pads ready to go for that cheap shot. We have the Fansong E, and of course we have a spoon rest of P12. They're just kind of sitting there ready. And all these can be damaged individually. And uh, that's an important concept. Now, when I come over to my P-19, if I went over to the weapons page, you'll observe it is blank because the entire P-19 is one complete unit. Now, let me go ahead and bring in this airfield for a second here. And if you actually take a look at my hardened aircraft shelter, now you'll go down to weapons here and you'll see that there's nothing here, which makes sense. However, if you were to actually go into the uh, database page here, which you'll observe, is the fact that it has 350 damage points. This thing takes a lot of pepper to take out of commission. So let's go ahead and switch back to our other side real quick. So for the purpose of the scenario, I have myself an F4, which is perfect aircraft for this. <laughs> I kind of feel bad for him, actually. So what he's going to do is he's going to go ahead and uh, commence an attack here. I'm going to get myself a little bit closer into range before I do anything silly here. Looking pretty good here, looking pretty good here. I'm liking the way this goes. Fantastic. So what we need is an active radar signal for this thing to actually fire. And if I look down here, you'll notice that I've got my flat face and I've got my SAM-2 here. Now, if I press my uh, shift, uh, let's see, that was shift F1, my bad, and go ahead and click on this guy, you'll see I'm allowed to fire this weapon at him. And this makes sense because it is a unit that has an active radar. So I'm going to go ahead and pop that thing off. It's going to come ripping off the rail there and it's going to start making its way down to the target. And of course, uh, you can see it's just kind of chilling, kind of doing its thing, kind of doing its thing, making its way down uh, all the way through. Of course, our SAM-2. Uh, we're going to go ahead and play the game a little bit here. Grab my SAM-2. We're going to go ahead and flip that thing on. Just for the purposes of, again, our scenario here, we're going to turn it on just like that. Just a way we get a nice lock on that fire control radar, that juicy, juicy fire control radar, which we actually want to damage here. Get a little bit closer. I'll go ahead and shift F1. I'm going to go click on him. Uh, you'll notice we're allowed to fire. We're going to go ahead and fire one of those. Off he goes. Go home. Your mission's done today. <laughs> actually, you know what? Don't go home. Let me go ahead and uh, sketch you down here. I'm going to make you come down here at a nice low altitude. We're going to do a strafing around if things don't go well. So we have the missile on the way. Oh, you can see here that we have one missile allocated to this target, and you can see we have one missile allocated to this target. The SAM-2, the reason the Illuminator just popped up is because it's basically desperately trying to hit that thing as it comes in. It's not going to be able to do anything about it. And this little 11 here just gives us a heads up of what's left of that battery. So it comes down. Oh, the first one gets hit. You can see that it is obliterated. Oh, that truck took that standard arm probably somewhere in the dish and probably exploded. So that truck is gone. And again, one damage point. The standard arm does a lot of damage here. If I actually would open this up real quick and scroll down. Let's see here, a standard arm. What do we got here? What do we got? Starm, if you prefer. Let's see here, warhead, warhead. Uh, da, da, da. I am just going right by it, aren't I? Uh, da, da. Warhead, there we go. 62 damage points. Oh yeah, it'll obliterate uh, that radar post. Now, here comes the next one is uh, racing in. Uh, the, uh, you can see the SA-2 is uh, trying to acquire it. Um, it's got to be a bit of a process. It's not to say the SA-2 can't do this. It's just very unlikely. It just doesn't have the resolution to hit something that small and fast. Oh! Now, one of the things you'll notice is if you look in the upper left corner is the fact that this number is now 10 instead of the number 11. It was a few moments ago. So if I were to actually go to red team real quick... <laughs> 
<laughs> you could see uh, we, we took quite a hit there. And if I actually click on this and go to damage control, you will observe the fact that my spoon rest, uh, that's unfortunately not the thing, that's not the expensive part. Uh, that was the search radar. The search radar basically took an arm to the face. And you can see everything else in the battery is actually completely operational, including the fire control radar. So as long as there's something to cue this weapon, um, I'm not done with this fight. I'm actually going to have to go switch on air to ground strafing here so I can come say hi. Let's see here, air to ground strafing. There we go. We'll go ahead and flip that sucker on. Uh, we're actually going to have to do this properly. I kind of feel bad for this guy. So I'm going to go ahead and get myself some shift up one button here. Click on that one. One, two, uh, that's it. Oh, I only get two, I get two bird. Oh, those are Mavericks. I'm, I apologize. I don't have a cannon on this thing. That's okay though, because Maverick's actually going to do a better job of what I want to do anyway. Let's go get ourselves into range. One, two. Go ahead and use the other one. Now you may go home. You have completed your task, my friend. Go home. Now, these are Mavericks. These are really, really big missiles. Um, this thing is much, much bigger than it looks. But uh, one of the things you'll notice here is it's pretty fast, all that other stuff, but it, it hits very, very, very hard. Let's see if I can actually find it this time here. Ah, here we go. 66 damage points. That's enough. So here comes my two Mavericks. I'll actually switch to the other side so you can watch the uh, fireworks here. Uh, we lost the sensor. Remember, we lost... Oh, oh we fired one. Oh, there's another one. Look at this, look at this. Now we notice the Maverick. Oh, ouch. Ouch. Now you'll see here, uh, we took some damage there. Now if I click back on this guy and go back to damage control, you'll see we still didn't get the expensive part, unfortunately. <laughs> we just got the uh, search radar and two of the little pieces here. So we did not succeed in splattering the whole battery. And unfortunately for this Phantom, uh, he's going to have to really stomp on it to get out of the way of those Sams. Pretty confident the Phantom's going to get away. That is a tail chase with a missile. That's, that's pretty unlikely. Uh, 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 is it going to get him? Nah, it's not going to get him. I like how he fired another one. <laughs> As if that's going to work. Uh, one of the fun things you can do, by the way, now, is if you turn on a little pin cushion view, if I go over here to uh, pin cushion mode. Ah, there we go. Cool. You can actually watch this missile kind of track towards him. And the reason I love that now is, like, you can actually kind of, like, see the action here. So if we go like this, there you go. So you can see the missile actually making its climb out uh, towards my lovely little phantom. Go, phantom, go, phantom, go, phantom. This would be a very challenging shot, by the way. It's getting into the thinner air. Oh, 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 oh. Got to go like this so you can like see it about the same altitude here. Wait for it. Wait for it. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. It stalled. <laughs> so you can see the difference between those two unit types. Enjoy.